It's a profound quietness when I, when I pray and when I connect with, with God. I've never had that up until I embraced Islam. I pray five times a day. I fast the month of Ramadan. I'm still new to Islam. I'm working for my religion. It's my belief, if I do these things, I'll go to paradise. I'll end up in heaven. I'm a proud Aboriginal Anglo-Australian Muslim woman. I'm Australian. I'm 100% true blue, white Muslim. So in Islam, there's, there's major sins and minor sins, all right? Hundreds convert or revert to Islam in Australia every year, most obligated through marriage. But there's a growing number of Anglo-Australians choosing to cross over to what many now see as the world's most controversial faith. We are seeing something like uh, three to four reverts a week. Um, including in those reverts will be, you know, Anglo-Australians, which will make up the majority. The religiously curious, the recently converted, or those seeking solace, come to this weekly meetup where Saeed teaches the fundamentals of Islam. Converting to Islam took a really, really long time. I researched and I read countless books and I was online and I was watching videos and lectures and all of it. And it was a three-year journey. Sarah grew up in the Bible Belt of Australia. The Hills District in New South Wales has the highest rate of Christian church attendance in the country. She converted to Islam while studying psychology at university. Islam gives you like a roadmap of how to live everything that you need in order to have, you know, in my opinion, a really happy life. Islam tells you how to do that and I didn't have that connection, you know, in my previous faith. I'm a good Australian, I vote. I work for Australian Mail Service, I shop in Woolworths, I, I, I have barbecues on weekends. To me, I'm an Australian as Australian could be, really. Luke grew up with no religion. Family trauma led him to make a new mate he calls the almighty Allah. My ex-wife, she took my kids and left me just out of the blue one day. Um, very touching, heartbreaking. I still think about it day to day with my kids, but that's kind of when I, I was sitting here every day coming home to an empty house. You know, I, I had been looking for direction. I've been looking for answers. Why am I here? You know, where do I come from? What's my roots? What's my, you know, what's my purpose in life? Luke attended Saeed's classes for more than a year, but only recently converted to Islam. Choosing Islam would have to be, I'd say, one of the most life-changing experiences I've been through. Making me a Muslim doesn't make me any different. I, I still have friends, family. Like, a lot of times friends come to my ho house or I go to their house. We still have a laugh, have a chat. We still bond. OK, I can't drink. That's OK. You can have a beer. I can sit and talk to you. You know, I don't need, we don't need to go down the milk bar and get a hamburger with bacon on it. You know, we can put that aside. Okay, maybe it's a little bit different to most white Australians, but I've met many white Muslims. And I'm not the first, I'm not the last. Inshallah, mate. I'll see you soon. Inshallah, thank you. My family saw that I was reading and researching Islam a lot, so it wasn't, I don't think, for them a very big shock when I came out and said, hey, mum, dad, I want to become Muslim. My Indigenous grandfather, he saw that I was changing in a positive way, so I was, yeah, I was really lucky that they were really supportive. Okay, so the nuts and bolts are in the Sharia. Ah. The current issues that we have today, where Muslims are in the spotlight, you got that feeling that people are looking at you differently. They're looking at you as if you're one of the enemy now. We're asking the wider community, you know, the, the non-Muslims, get to know what Islam is all about. Build those bridges. Remove the fear. 
But given militants group ISIS are beheading people in the name of Islam, Australia is on high terror alert and one terror suspect is dead. It's not surprising that some Australians are concerned. Islam is quite clear on what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Amongst those things are like, you know, alcohol. Alcohol is forbidden. You know, eating like um, ham, pork is forbidden. And the killing of innocent people is also forbidden. Anyone outside those parameters is acting incorrectly. You know, it's actually as simple as that. I hear of all of the atrocities that are happening overseas and I pick up the Qur'an, which is my, my, my life guide. There's nothing in there about torturing people. There's nothing in there about conflict and fighting and, and promoting that. My way of living is the predominant way of Muslims living within our community. I think, you know, most people are really peaceful, passive, happy families that just live their life. I think the, what, what we're being, you know, shown um, in the media and abroad are, are the vast minority. Hadith, remember? The sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, Hadith. It's not up to me to make that conversion. There's no need to try to, you know, manipulate someone into, into the faith or something like that. That's all nonsense to me. I don't want to see Islam, my religion, dragged through the mud. Right? Nor do I want to see my fellow Australian right, scared of me or my wife or my children. So I'm doing this for the future. What goes on around the world or what goes on within Australia, I don't think that skews my judgement of what Islam really is because I feel I know better. I feel I know the true Islam and that's what gives me peace. My message to Australians watching this and who are afraid of me is that we're not that different. I'm an Australian. I, I bleed red, I have hair, um, but this is the way I choose to live my life. I'm the exact same. I just have a scarf on. <laughs>